In this video, I'm circling back on the simple touch probe project, which as it turns out, isn't quite that simple. We'll break that down and see if we can get it closer to a finished product. And while this isn't the fun stuff, it's part of the process to get there. So stay tuned. When we last left off, I finished the probe design, milled the body parts, and then sent off the circuit board for fabrication. Everything was looking good. I received the boards back and assembled a couple to test with, all surface mount parts, 0603 resistors, capacitors, and an LM358 op amp. With the boards assembled, I ran a couple sensitivity tests to dial in the correct resistance, and everything appeared to be working as expected, or so I thought. Before I could complete the probe, I had to finish the magnetic connector that I had originally designed. It would consist of a resin printed body and a small circuit board with conductive contacts. The connector would be held in place by a magnetic force and pulling the connector in contact with the pogo pins which were mounted on the board to supply 5 volt ground and signal. Once completed the connector worked as expected. The problem I had was with the performance and design complexity of this thing. Let's just break that down a bit. One, it imposed a lot of complexity on the top part of the probe body to encase the magnets and align the connector, which required several milling operations. Two, although rare earth magnets were used, the strength wasn't as good as I had hoped and space was very limited. Three, the pogo pins were tricky in an all metal enclosure. They had to be isolated, which was tedious to prevent accidental grounding of the circuit. Four, the assembly of the connector was small and tedious to build and assemble. Five, all in all, the magnetic connector really didn't add any value to the overall solution. And while this was an exercise in creativity, in the end, the usability was marginal and introduced a majority of the complexity to the design. While I immediately sought to find alternative solutions, this would be used to test, while the remaining functionality of the probe was tested. With the assembled boards and custom connector in hand, I assembled the probe to find that the strategy I had planned had some flaws. At first, let me explain how this should work. If you're not familiar with how piezo produces electricity, here's a 30 second explanation. Piezoelectric crystals are sandwiched between two conductive materials, and when the piezo crystals are stressed by pressure or material deflection, they create a slight electrical potential difference. And in this case, that microcurrent is measured and used to detect touch. Okay, with that, the problem of my design was that the piezo trace supported the piezo too much. So well that it wasn't allowed to flex enough to trip the Schmidt trigger without significant force. The result was much less sensitive than it was designed to be. If you recall the design, it was a piezo sandwich between a platter and an effector with a spring applying pressure between the two. When the platter was moved and the effector would cause friction on the piezo. Unfortunately, the piezo platter was flat, didn't suspend the piezo or allow it to flex. And as a result, the minute touches did not deflect the piezo crystals enough to produce the threshold voltage required by the circuit. Is primarily caused by the strength of the spring that I was using to depress it and not having a void underneath the piezo to allow it to flex. Sounds like an easy fix, right? Well, sort of. With the design, there were several interdependent needs of the assembly, and changing the platter means addressing those needs as well. Before we go there, let's talk about some of the other changes that need to be considered. Earlier, we discussed the complexity of the magnetic connector. If there's any chance of this being reproduced in any quantity, it needs to be simplified. Making it wireless would be the best, but replacing it with a 2.5mm headphone jack would be great. Easier to use, install, and would greatly simplify the design of the probe body. For now, let's pursue that option. If things go well, we may come back to the more complex wireless option in a future version. By the way, this video is sponsored by Altium. It's the software I used to design this circuit board. If you haven't taken a chance to download a free copy and see what you're missing, I've put links in the description and with Altium Designer, creating these products is a piece of cake. It's fast, accurate, and fun to use. The efficient workspace has some of the best features in the industry. Through all phases of your development, you'll be empowered to do your best work as you grow into its more advanced capabilities. The link below will allow a free trial version of the software, so you can check it out and see what Enterprise Class ECAD feels like. Now back to the project. In Altium, I updated the board design to incorporate the new headphone jack. A design rules check was ran and the manufacturing Gerber files were generated to get the new boards made. For that, I used my go-to board house, JLCPCB. To do that, I head over to JLCPCB.com and drag the Gerber zip file onto the order form. It's uploaded and a preview is rendered. For the most part, the defaults are a good start. You just need to select the quantity, color, finish, and we're good to go. 
In this case, we're going with a thin one millimeter board and having them panelize these small boards to simplify the assembly. I submit the order for processing and that's gonna take about a week. Meanwhile, in Fusion 360, while adding the headphone jack to the design greatly simplified the body design, reworking the piezo platter took some more thought. Let's talk about the new piezo tray design. As I worked into this new design, you have to understand the requirements that are driving this change. The piezo needed to be floating, able to flex to detect the minute vibrations of the slightest touch. The probe mount needed to interface with the piezo in a way that allows it to capture those minor touches during the probing process. The tray should also absorb large movements in the event that you crash your probe. Hey, you know, life happens, and while it wouldn't be able to absorb everything, it shouldn't break if you crash into your stock. If you look at solutions online, they tend to super glue probes to the piezo, which won't work for this reason. The probe will pop right off with any minor impact or even repeated edge probing. Finally, the tray needed downward force to keep it seated against the grub screws. With those requirements, in Fusion 360, I worked through several iterations to resolve the complex interdependent features which this stack would need to provide. I have to say, this design was complicated, and through the process, I quit more than once, setting it aside to work on other projects and reset my perspective. It was frustrating, to say the least, iterating on the design several times, 3D printing new designs, then testing, then rinse and repeat, again and again and again. I could have made it larger and resolved the majority of the issues, but at this point, I had to find the solution for the current design, if for nothing more than to challenge myself to learn. After all, avoiding the problem would mean avoiding learning, so I pressed on. Ultimately, I landed on a solution. The piezo tray was converted into a piezo rack, with the piezo rack consisting of the following components. The probe mount, which is basically a ball head with a flattened top that the probe screws into. The probe tray, which is a ball socket for the probe mount, which allows the probe to seat and swivel about 15 degrees in any direction. Pressure from the piezo keeps it biased to the center. With the probe mount in the tray, the piezo sits in the tray and a cage cap retains the piezo on the stack, applying a slight pressure to the probe surface. Now together, this probe rack interfaces the probe to the piezo without glue to provide a highly sensitive engagement between the two surfaces. The entire rack can be trammed using the grub screws and the nose of the body. Lastly, a laser cut foam disc applies pressure between the circuit board and the piezo cage, forcing it down to the nose, while allowing about five millimeters of additional movement in the event of a crash. I feel this is a fair compromise for the use of the probe, so I'm gonna move forward with that. With that, Final versions of the print were printed out on the Form 3 using Preform and their black resin. The parts were cleaned in IPA and post-cured to harden the resin. The simplified probe body was milled on the pocket NC from aluminum and this time around I decided to mill the nose from a clear blue acrylic rod to allow the LED to illuminate the nose when probing. Milling on the pocket NC is super handy for these types of parts and while I can't afford software that can generate real 5-axis toolpaths, the work holding features alone save lots of time. For more information on the Pocket NC, I put a link down in the description. You gotta go check this thing out. I've also got another video for the top 10 tips on working with 5-axis machines. I'll put a link in the description as well. When finished, the aluminum was sanded and polished and the plastic was sandblasted so that it'll act like a light pipe for the internal LED. With the design updated and parts having been tested for better results, the next step is getting the updated boards back and complete the probe again. This iteration of the design changes will result in a better end product. If at first you don't get it right, improving the design comes with the territory. It's just part of the process. In this case, it'll make the probe easier to use and have more reliable performance. So mission accomplished, almost, sorta. When I get the new boards back, I'll be sure to share the final use and performance of the probe. And then we can focus on incorporating its use into a couple specialized projects I have lined up for it. We'll also share the boards and design files so you can get your hands on one as well. That's going to do it for this video, and I'm one step closer to working on fun stuff again. I mean, damn, starting to feel like work. If you're new here, hit that subscribe button and ring that notification bell. It'll keep you notified as new videos come out. If you like this particular video, give it a thumbs up. It lets me know you care. Thanks for watching the video. Take time to share, leave comments, and in the meantime, be safe, have fun, and I'll see you next time. Hey, if you like the video, please subscribe to the channel. It's how we're building the community. Also, allow me to bring better content. Also, check me out on these other social networks. There's lots of cool stuff there, too.